All right, we're here today with J.R. McCabe, uh, SVP of Video from Time, Inc. Thanks for being here. Glad to be here, Peter. All right, so Time, Inc., traditional magazine publisher. Tell us about the evolution from magazine publisher to digital company. Yeah, it's, uh, it's been an interesting period of time. I've been there just over two years. And I, I look at the portfolio, first of all, as, a, as brands, not really magazines. Um, you know, what, what intrigued me the most when I came to Time, Inc. was you look at brands that have global recognition for many of them, some of them that have been here 100 years or more. We have some in the UK that are over 100 years old. So there's a great brand equity mm -hmm. that and we have an ability to and a permission to launch from. So for me, it's a natural evolution into the space of, of video and, and uh, short and long form content. So that's how we're looking at it. It's basically been a time of um, building from that base and extending into audiences that probably didn't know us or know of us in video or TV or any of those formats. Right, so the brands that we all know and love, Fortune, Sports Illustrated, People, SI, but you're creating new brands too. I mean, yeah. I read about the Daily Cut. Um, can you talk about what you're doing there in video? Sure, thanks. We launched the Daily Cut uh, about a week ago. Um, and the Daily Cut is actually a platform come experience, right? So it's a place where you can find all of your content by vertical, but we designed it with the consumer in mind. So instead of going in and finding each individual brand listed, you find the editorially curated content in the featured section. You look at the newest content in, in reverse chronology order. And then you look at what's trending over the last seven days, how we know consumers are consuming. And then as you go into the experience, regardless of platform, because it's in the, it's in the uh, iOS store, it's in the Apple store on iOS, it's in the Android store, um, it's on Roku, it's on desktop, um, you, you get the best experience. And while you do that, it surfaces more content that's what you choose and will eventually be able to personalize it to you if you choose to log in. Yeah, so a couple questions. How yeah. challenging is it to launch a new brand like the Daily Cut? I mean, <laughs> what kind of success metrics are you expected to meet? I mean, how tortured do you get when you're trying to launch something versus like we have to innovate, just go for it? Yeah, uh, it's hard to launch any brand uh, and especially in today's market where there's so much fragmentation, incredibly hard. Um, the reason we did this with one place instead of 25 different ones for each individual brand was to that point. Discoverability is the greatest challenge. Um, the success metrics we're going to look at are, are you know, both from usage and engagement, but also the ability for us to grow it as a unified experience. So you can look to us to have the daily cut across our brands to unify a viewing experience that each brand inside our portfolio can then customize to their own needs. Right. So it was more about building the platform and the experience as opposed to just launching an app. Not that that's not a valuable piece, but that wasn't our strategy. Yeah. It was a piece of the experience. You talked about discoverability. Yeah. You said iOS. I mean, how, how do you make sure people discover this new brand, all this new content? What's your strategy for distribution and right. finding audiences? Well, the first piece that, that we utilize is our own platform. Um, in November of 2014, and I think we just released this. If we didn't, we're about to now. Uh, we just we topped uh, 107 million digital consumers for our brands versus 102, 104 million, I'm sorry, in print. So we're using our own platforms, for, platforms first. I think, you know, we had not historically habituated our consumers in video at all. Mm -hmm. So the first place is it starts at home and then you build distribution beyond our walls. The second thing, as you know, is all about consumer experience and awareness. And so for us, it was to take our brands everywhere the consumers are and not just expect they're gonna come to us. Because if we just said, oh, they're going to come to us, that would be a fool's errand for us to yeah. build it that way. So we're extending through a partner network that we built in a premium um, model last year. We'll extend that again this year. And what I mean by that is it's the best experiences we can find, both direct and through third parties, to offer the consumers video wherever they are, under rules that we've set from the beginning. User-initiated content, above the fold, 400 plus size players. We have block list provision for every partner we distribute through. Um, because we have to have that. You know, I'm, I'm sitting listening to some of these sessions before and, and just sitting here thrilled to hear everything that's happening in data and analytics because we need that as a part of our model. And, and we have to create a premium experience because we're seeing, I'm seeing more demand than I have inventory. So I need okay. further distribution to keep the CPMs at a high number. And right. that's where the premium market is. Right. So let me ask you kind of a provocative question. <laughs> you might not like it, but um, I'll set it up this way. If anybody watches House of Cards on Netflix, you'll remember the first episode of the first season. It set yeah. in the Washington Herald. You got this young up and coming reporter who wants a bigger assignment than the Metro desk. Yeah. She goes to her boss and says, I want to do a blog. I want to get into the heart of Washington. And he says, 
this is the Washington Herald, not TMZ. And she says, do you know how many people watch TMZ? And he says, I couldn't care less. And she said, well, that's why print journalism is dying. And then the grizzled boss says, well, then it'll die with dignity. <laughs> so help me understand why Joe Ripp is not going to let Time Inc. die with dignity. Well, Sorry first, for that. That's, first uh, it's, it's OK. Love House of Cards. Uh, uh, so it's, it's great. And I can't wait for the new season to premiere. So that's good. Uh, and, I, and I won't speak for Joe, but what I can say, okay. what I can say that we've been doing since Joe arrived um, is, is we're constantly evolving and we're constantly taking a look at how we're re-engineering to invest in certain areas, right? So, you know, we're right-sizing in certain places, we're investing in others. Um, but again, at the top, the reason I'll tell you this is I took this role because of the brand equity, right? I don't look at our portfolio, again, as, as magazines. Right. So what I would say to you is you're talking about brands <laughs> that permeate a conversation um, with many people. We want to lead conversations. Are there challenges in print? They're well documented. No one needs me to comment on them. Sure. Um, and Joe has been on the record on those as well. But what we find is we have brands that now spawn other brands. You know, uh, you take a look at what the NFL has tried to do, make it a 365-day experience over the last several years. But we have a very large brand called Swimsuit inside Sports Illustrated that we've tried to expand and build. We have something called Swim Daily, which is spun out of that franchise. Um, we launched the Daily Cut, to your point. Right. We, just invent, we just invested this past week in Keaton Row, uh, which is an online social retail transactional business in the style and fashion space. Um, and that's a digital investment, not, not a, a video investment. But it, I think as you look at where we live inside verticals, for us there's a huge ability yeah. to launch from where we currently exist, despite the challenges that, that have been documented in print. So for me, it's a huge upside. Yeah. opportunity. We know there'll be challenges. We have to face them, but this is how we face them. In Swimsuit, you had another announcement, right? Uh, the concert series? Yeah, or? so we're, we're, going to do, we're, going to do some, uh, we're going to do some things around the Swim franchise uh, in, in concert fashion. We, we announced some things uh, we're going to do in Nashville. Um, and again, it's a further okay. extension of the brand. Um, and we're very excited about that. Okay. Yeah. Um, so that sounds pretty sexy. Let's go to the unsexy part of the business. Um, you know, brand safe environments. You talked about some of the things you yeah. do to make sure that your inventory is clean. Sure. Um, what about uh, the measurability? You have something going on with um, Tremor. Can mm -hmm. you talk about the Tremor yeah. partnership? I mean, trying to keep, you know, or we look at our brands the same as we hope a marketer looks at theirs, right? Which is we, we don't want to tarnish our brand just like we don't want to tarnish a client's brand. So for us, everything from, from the Comscore products and Nielsen products to using the Video Hub product from Tremor, double verify to certify where we're being um, viewed and where we're not, are all the things we've put into our mix. Yeah. Because we have to be, you know, I can't afford to be in, a, in, a, in an environment that isn't a premium environment. Right. Because we're asking for and getting premium pricing, but we're also putting our brands in front of consumers in a way that we need to make sure the brand is protected, yeah. as well as grown. And I think part of that is the socialization of content. We need to be very cautious on where we go, but also we need to be thinking forwardly. Um, and that's how we're putting those products into place. Right. As the SVP of video, I mean, you don't have quota or, or um, revenue responsibility, but it, you talk about it a lot. I mean, how much do you have to balance innovation Gosh. with, um, you know, making the money? Yeah. No, well, I, 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 do, have, I do have a P&L responsibility for the show. So, so the way we okay. run it is, and, and that's really um, not, a, not a major point other than the fact that I have to look at both sides of the equation. Um, because I'm responsible for it, and then we allocate it back to our brands. Um, but it's, it's a big piece of everything we do because we're in the business of content creation, right? So I'm not in the business if I can't afford to produce it. Right. And, and, you know, for us, we have to look very consciously at how we're creating. Creative excellence drives everything Time Inc.'s always done. Right. Like storytelling, I heard someone talk about it yesterday, storytelling and creative. Whether you're talking about an ad or whether you're talking about a short form arc or a documentary or a full length feature, Storytelling leads the, the entire conversation. But how you monetize that allows you to build more. Yeah. And if we don't have a business of content creation, I'm out of business in right. the video space. I mean, do you think you're making more money on long form or short form? I mean, a lot of, <coughs> lot of the content is snackable. Sure. Sometimes people want a meal. Like, how do you think about it? Um, well, we're, we're making, fortunately, we've been fortunate. We're making money on both right now. Okay. But what we're trying to do is we're not trying to do everything for everybody. We're trying to be very, very conscious of where we're developing first, um, and those are taking existing franchises and building beyond them. Um, short form is a very big piece of what we do, and, and I say that that's evolved too, because short form can be an eight to 15 mini 
18, 15 minute short documentary that used to be maybe 60 minutes. Right. But it's still shorter form than a long form documentary, but it's not a one minute video. Right. Um, you know, our team won an, uh, an Edward R. Murrow for one of our, our Red Border films last fall. They just were nominated for a National Magazine Award for the documentary Rise. But those are short mini docs. Right. But that's shorter form than a standard length program, but it's still original programming. So right. we look at it depending on genre. In the sports and news space, we have to be short form. Right. We just started SI Wire out of our Sports Illustrated newsroom, and that is short form news bits every minute of every day that we find a story. We maybe do 18, 8 to 15 of them a day. Oh, wow. And, and we'll do that for the brands that are relevant in the immediate space. Some are longer tail that don't need a up to the minute report, but those that do will, will be there. Is this content creation happening in the studio or is it produced, edited, directed by one man bands walking around? Where, where are you creating all this stuff? Yes to both. So okay. we have five studios now. We have three in New York and one in our, on our facility in Birmingham and an insert stage in LA. We're building new ones in the new building. We're moving downtown in New York to uh, uh, some really spectacular space um, and uh, we'll be building new studios there but we are very efficient in our production model okay. we have turned it on its head we don't you know we don't put three and four person teams in the field to do a story that's not how content today is created for the right. most part right. in in some of our genres um, so we're doing it very efficiently we do have a full-time staff in new york and los angeles and birmingham um, and we've added uh, we've added some personnel in london so we have the ability to be global when we need to be um, Studio-based is a lot of what we do, but you know the longer form content we do in the field, and we do with third parties as well. Right. So we're producing as much as we can internally. We did over 8,000 pieces of original video programming in 2014. We'll do over 10,000 this year. We do two live daily shows. They're both sponsored. Okay. Um, and so we're growing where we think the, the right spots are. You know, there's so many, uh, there's so few barriers for anybody to do whatever they want. YouTube is going to try to conquest the halftime this year, they've announced a big Super yeah. Bowl initiative. They'll launch the second halftime starts, hoping people will take their multi-screen habits and redirect them to uh, a YouTube environment. I mean, how do you decide? You, you have permission to go anywhere in today's day and age, right? Yeah. How, how do you decide where, which adjacencies and which line extensions you go after? Well, I think it's, it's a great point, and, and it's one where we have to be cautious of what we do. And, and so, you know, YouTube has the massive scale to activate a large consumer base. I mean, hundreds of millions of potential viewers globally that they can activate during a product and program. We wouldn't probably go in that space. We'd be adjacent to your point mm -hmm. and talk about the event around the event. Um, but the areas where we see the greatest concentration, uh, sports and news are immediate. The entertainment and celebrity space because of people and EW in style are areas of natural growth for us because those are brands where we know people trust us. So that, mm -hmm. that's the answer to the question is areas where people trust us the most are areas you'll see us continue to expand in. And then the experiment, last one, the experiment you're doing with the millennials, um, I forget the name of it, it's on the Rebel Mouse platform. Oh, so that's called the Snug. So the Snug. Yeah, so the idea is that's a spin out of, uh, of something from this old house. And the, it's a do-it-yourself kind of platform. And the idea is, you know, where we can have um, feeds coming in and informing our, and filtering um, our content and our decisions about what others are doing and using and trending is a natural place for us to expand as well. Because when we have to listen to what our consumers want and tell us they're, they not only want, but what they're doing. And I think that's what things like Rabble Mouse will allow us to do. Great. All right. Thank you Thanks, so much. Thanks, Peter. Thanks.